Uh, good morning, good morning. Great to be back in White Plains. A uh, little windy out, but it's uh, a lot better than it is in other parts of our state right now and other parts of our country. But uh, I do want to welcome everyone here and give a special shout out to, first of all, Senator Pete Harcum, who you'll be hearing from shortly. I want to thank him for his years of service, his friendship, and his advocacy for the people of his district. Also, Senator Jamal Bailey has joined us. Where are you, Senator? Sit right there, Senator. Thank you uh, for being such a great champion and supporting our clean energy initiatives. Uh, Amy Pollan, we're in your district. Uh, it's a fabulous district, and I thank you for your service as well. Westchester is synonymous with George Latimer, a great leader, someone I've gotten to know for many, many years. George Latimer. And Tom Roach, who's our mayor here, and this is not my first visit to this area or to be touring uh, what he's done here. I'll be talking about that in a few minutes. But also Doreen Harris, uh, my passenger, someone who's got great courage. Uh, uh, so I thank her for her work as uh, the CEO of NYSERDA. So, you know, it's great to come back here because you get a chance to put a spotlight on places that are really nation leading. And as we look to the future, you can already look at what people who have a vision have already accomplished. So it's, it's fitting that we be here in White Plains to make some announcements about our transition as a state to electric vehicles. I came here back in 2015, I believe, Mayor, and you walked me through the downtown and you were talking about all the electric charging stations that you wanted to see for your community. And no other mayors were talking like that. I mean, you just were so ahead of your time. And I remember uh, you said you want to be at the forefront of the clean energy revolution. And you've really embraced this. Uh, you have 16 hybrid electric cars in your fleet, uh, leading for other, leading uh, our state, 28 city-owned electric charging stations, and uh, as well as all the other things that you and the city council have accomplished. So I want to continue to uh, hold you out as a model of what true leadership looks like, especially here uh, this past week, because we celebrated Climate Week. I participated in a number of initiatives, a number of announcements. But also, in New York, every week is Climate Week. This is not a new phenomenon. Every week is Climate Week. And we're committed to protecting our environment and combating climate change every single day. But in particular, this is actually National Drive Electric Week. So uh, there's a week for everything, but this is National Drive Electric Week. So, uh, so really, you know, the electric vehicles are the keys to achieving this. And uh, I know what I'm talking about because they've been having me test drive electric vehicles since their inception. I guess it's always like when I was lieutenant governor, go ahead, have the lieutenant governor do it. I actually did a lot of autonomous vehicles by myself on highways, so uh, go figure. Uh, now I have a lieutenant governor who can do that for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it is great, great, great to uh, see what we're doing here. And you know, I have, I've always posed this question, some of you know the answer because you've heard me say it, but did you know how long we've had electric vehicles in the state of New York? Over 100 years, over 100 years. But 10 points to the person who can shout out the name of the place where they first started. Buffalo, Buffalo. Buffalo. <laughs> you can take the girl out of Buffalo, but you can't take Buffalo out of the girl. I get it, I get it. Uh, it's Buffalo. And what it was was, and I actually went and visited the museum where they celebrate this great accomplishment. And the original story is that you know, while men at work, women wanted to have some freedom. And the, it was very hard for them to really drive and have the ability to escape their domestic uh, servitude in many cases. They, they, had electric, they had a crank that was very hard for them. So a Buffalo Electric Motor Company was created and they had the first electric vehicles, which actually gave women the freedom to drive even before they had the freedom and the right to vote. So that's where we were a long time ago. And if we hadn't had the oil barons of the time decide that there is another energy source known as oil and gasoline to power our vehicles, can you imagine what a different world we'd be in today with, with respect to our environment? So, um, can't undo the past, but we can look to the future. And we're gonna continue making New York State the home of electric vehicle usage. And I'm excited because vehicles like this are made right in Detroit. American made. I think the mayor will talk a little about his experience with these vehicles. And here's how we're making it happen. You know, we're really putting our foot down the accelerator and revving up our efforts to make sure we have this transition, not someday in the future, but on a specific date, a specific year, by the year 2035. And I signed this goal last year, 
We had to wait for California to take a step because there's some federal requirement that California had to go first. That's the only time letting them go first. That's all right. Uh, but once they made that decision, we were able to step up immediately and say, now there's nothing holding us back. So we've achieved that milestone that we can be zero emission vehicles. New vehicles will all be zero emission vehicles by the year 2035. So we're also working on our advanced clean car two initiatives, and that's going to be 20, 35% of electric vehicles by 2026 and 68 by the year 2030. So it's not just saying all of a sudden in the future. We actually have benchmarks to achieve to show we're on the path to get there. Also, uh, upfront costs are still high. They're still high. I understand that. So we're going to continue having an assistance program to help purchasers defray the cost. And today I'm here to announce that we're adding $10 million to our Drive Clean Rebate program to help New Yorkers purchase and drive these vehicles. The rebate is available in all 62 counties. Uh, that's up to $2,000 per vehicle. And already we've issued over 78,000 rebates. And I want to continue that trajectory. Uh, we've already spent over $95 million. So, uh, so we're going to do that. But OK, we have the vehicles. But what about the chargers? Got to have the chargers. And I'm proud to announce that the power authorities just finished their installation of their 100th, 100th Evolve New York fast charger. Now, there's a difference between chargers and fast chargers. I've launched a lot of the fast charging stations. Think about how simple this is. Simply pull into a gas station, formerly known as a gas station. Convenience store, you want to pick up a couple snacks to take home. While you're in there for 20 minutes, with a fast charging station, your vehicle can be charged. No longer does it have to be overnight and longer periods of time. So we're focused on getting these fast chargers out there, and we've already accomplished over 100 when we're just getting started. So we're never going to hesitate. Uh, we are not heading down that dead end street any longer. We're going to keep powering forward, but I want to make sure that we have the investments necessary. Uh, lastly. The federal government, Depart the Department of Transportation, last week approved a $5 billion, $5 billion plan. Five billion, that's a big lot of, lot of zeros. For all 50 states to have charging stations and allocates within that $175 million for New York State. We've been already on this path, we've been on this road before, but now with this extra money from the federal commitment to clean, uh, clean energy initiatives, will be even faster. So uh, that's going to help over 14 interstates in New York, especially ones used by the people in this community, I-95, I-87, I-84, and I-684. So you're going to see that you have no more excuses, is my point. Okay? If you're saying, well, there's no more, I don't have enough charging stations, that era is over. I'm telling you where they are. So now we're ready to launch into this future. So that builds on our already $1 billion investment in expanding charging stations. So. I expect EV sales to go up. Uh, they've been up 30% already over 2021. That's extraordinary. And that's with supply chain shortages. We talk to a lot of dealers and the whole phenomenon we have with not having enough chips at the manufacturing facilities, we've had those issues. But that being said, our sales are still up 30% over last year. So we're also going to be making sure our school buses, school buses, uh, think about the kids who stand there and have to breathe in the fumes while they're waiting for the bus to come. That era will be over. And we've committed to making sure that by 2027, all school buses, all new school buses will be zero emission as well. And the whole fleet must be zero emission by the year 2035. So we're going to make sure we have the resources. We have over $500 million for our, from our Environmental Bond Act on the ballot this November. Just want to point that out. Make sure you turn over your ballot. Make sure you do the right thing and uh, take a look at that. And so, and so, welcome to the future. It's starting right here in places like White Plains. And again, I want to thank our mayor for leading the way and making sure we can see that if there's an intentionality, if you decide to do something, you make that commitment, it can be done, and we're seeing the evidence of that right here. But uh, to continue the conversation, his reflections on it, I'd like to bring up our Senator Pete Harcum. Thank you.